this section we will discuss about other group of direct oral anticoagulant drugs that is direct factor 10 inhibitors apixaban rivaroxaban and adoxaban are available drugs in this group direct factor 10 inhibitors directly bind to and inactivate activated factor 10 Factor 10 has a central role in clotting cascade. It can be activated both by extrinsic and intrinsic pathways. Once factor 10 is activated, it converts prothrombin to thrombin, and thrombin then converts fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin is required for formation of blood clot. So once factor 10 is activated, it results in continuation of clotting cascade and leads to production of fibrin. Factor 10 not only results in continuation of clotting cascade, but it also results in significant amplification of clotting cascade. One factor 10 can convert hundreds of prothrombin molecules to thrombin. And thrombin then have positive feedback effects on upstream clotting factors that results in activation of more factor 10 molecules and that then results in production of more thrombin and thrombin also contributes in activation of platelets so factor 10 has important role in clotting cascade activation of factor 10 leads to continuation of clotting cascade and activation of factor 10 also leads to significant amplification of clotting cascade. Factor 10 has an active site and this active site converts prothrombin molecule to thrombin. So factor 10 has an active site and this active site converts prothrombin to thrombin. So if we have a drug that can bind to and block this active site of factor 10 factor 10 then will not be able to convert prothrombin to thrombin and this will contribute to anticoagulant effects of that drug so direct factor 10 inhibitor drugs are the drugs that bind to and block the active site of factor 10 and these drugs not only bind to factor 10 that's present in blood but these drugs also bind to factor 10 that is bound to blood clot and factor 10 that is present in prothrombinase complex. In this way, these drugs prevent both formation and expansion of blood clot. So once factor 10 is inhibited, it will not be available for conversion of prothrombin molecule to thrombin. And thrombin will also not be available for its positive feedback effects on upstream clotting factors and its effects on platelets. So direct factor 10 inhibitors and fundaparinux are the drugs that only affect functions of factor 10 and these drugs are effective anticoagulants. Low molecular weight heparin, unfractionated heparin and warfarin also have effect on functions of factor 10. So factor 10 is important target of most anticoagulant drugs. Direct factor 10 inhibitor drugs have adequate bioavailability after oral administration and their peak plasma concentration and peak anticoagulant effects is achieved in 1 to 3 hours. As these drugs have immediate anticoagulant effects, so bridging therapy is not required when we start these drugs, as these drugs are expected to have immediate anticoagulant effects. And when we start these drugs, these drugs are considered to have predictable therapeutic anticoagulant effects, so routine monitoring of anticoagulant effects after starting these drugs is not required as these drugs are considered to have predictable anticoagulant effects. 
These drugs have both renal and hepatic clearance and we need to know renal and hepatic functions at start of treatment and we need to regularly monitor renal and liver function during course of treatment. Degree of renal clearance is variable for different direct factor 10 inhibitor drugs. Of available drugs, apixaban has lowest dependence on renal clearance and around 27% of this drug is excreted through kidneys. As considerable amount of these drugs is excreted through kidneys, so we need to regularly monitor renal functions. And in presence of chronic kidney disease, we need to reduce the dose beyond certain level of creatinine clearance and we need to stop these drugs beyond certain level of creatinine clearance. However, there is regional variation in levels of creatinine clearance beyond which we need to reduce the dose of these drugs and level beyond which we need to stop these drugs. These drugs are also metabolized in liver. However, drug interactions have less effect on these drugs as compared to warfarin. When we discuss indications of these drugs, these drugs have generally similar indications. However, each drug can only be used in recommended doses and for indications for that particular drug. Direct oral anticoagulant drugs that is direct factor 10 inhibitors and direct thrombin inhibitors that is dabigatrin are now considered as preferred drug for prevention of stroke and systemic embolization associated with non-valvular atrial fibrillation. As these drugs are considered to have at least same or better therapeutic outcomes and are considered to be associated with less bleeding complications as compared to warfarin. Among direct oral anticoagulant drugs, in guidelines, no drug is recommended over other drug for this indication. However, some studies have demonstrated that apixaban has better therapeutic outcomes and less bleeding complications as compared to other direct oral anticoagulant drugs. And these drugs are not recommended in presence of valvular atrial fibrillation that is atrial fibrillation associated with moderate to severe mitral stenosis and in presence of mechanical heart valves. As these drugs do not provide adequate anticoagulation in these situations and warfarin is still considered drug of choice in these situations. Other indications of apixaban include treatment of DVT and pulmonary embolism and prophylaxis of DVT after knee and hip replacement and prophylaxis of recurrent DVT and pulmonary embolism. Rivaroxaban has similar indications like apixaban. In addition, this drug can also be used in presence of acute coronary syndrome, chronic coronary artery disease, and peripheral vascular disease to prevent ischemic events. Edoxaban has some indications that are similar to apixaban and rivaroxaban. However, its use for prophylaxis of DVT after hip and knee replacement has regional variations. As we have discussed that these drugs are considered to have predictable anticoagulant effects, so regular monitoring of anticoagulant effects of these drugs is not required. However, in some situations, we will expect to know exact anticoagulant effects of these drugs. Like in presence of bleeding complications and in presence of 
very low or very high BMI and in presence of renal failure. And we will also consider to know exact anticoagulant effects of these drugs when drug interaction is expected and when there is treatment failure or in presence of unexpected bleeding complications. Although direct factor 10 inhibitor drugs can affect routinely available tests that are PT and PTT, however, these tests cannot tell us exact degree of anticoagulation due to these drugs. Because test results of these tests do not directly correlate with degree of anticoagulation or drug concentration of these drugs. So these tests cannot be used to know exact level of anticoagulation due to these drugs. There are two quantitative tests that correlate with degree of anticoagulation effects of these drugs. These tests are anti-factor 10 assays and drug levels. Anti-factor 10 assays designed for individual drug of this group can reliably tell us level of anticoagulation associated with that drug. These drugs will also affect anti-factor 10 assays designed for unfractionated heparin but again results will not correlate with level of anticoagulation and concentration of these drugs in blood. Measurement of plasma drug levels is a reliable way to measure anticoagulant effects of these drugs. However, this test may not be routinely available. We also need to regularly monitor renal and hepatic functions when using these drugs. If we want to reverse actions of these drugs, we have a specific antidote called endexinate alpha. Endexinate alpha is a recombinant synthetic molecule that looks like natural factor 10, however, it does not have functions of factor 10. So, if reversal of anticoagulant effects of these drugs is required, endexinate alpha in blood will bind to these drugs and natural factor 10 will become available for homeostasis. When endexinate alpha is not available, we can use factor-based preparations like prothrombin complex concentrates and when even PCC is not available, we can use plasma-based clotting factor containing preparations to reverse actions of these drugs.